On the 1st of December, 2004, the Prime Minister of Vanuatu, His Excellency Serge Vahor, was approached by the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China, Bao Shusheng. And before the Ambassador could say anything, the Prime Minister punched him. You probably know this, but that's not how international diplomacy is supposed to work. So what happened? A lot led up to that punch. This is a story of corruption, greed, insults, the collapse of a government, and eventually, jail time for multiple government ministers. Let's do this. Hi everyone, I'm Fredo Rockwell, and the story I'm going to tell you comes from what is undoubtedly the strangest frontier of international diplomacy, the competition for recognition between the Republic of China and the People's Republic of China. Our story begins in late October 2004, when the Prime Minister of Vanuatu, Serge Vahor, flew to Taiwan and agreed to switch his country's recognition from the People's Republic of China to the regular Republic of China, and this was a big deal. Just in case you don't know, both the People's Republic, which from now on I'm just going to call China, and the Republic of China, which from now on I'm just going to call Taiwan, claim to be the sole legitimate government for all of China, including Taiwan. And both governments go to great lengths to persuade every country in the world to recognize their claim. Neither of these positions are actually true. The reality is that China and Taiwan have been behaving like separate countries for over 70 years now, but neither side is willing to admit this. So pretty much every country in the world is forced to choose sides in this contest between diplomatic fantasies. Most countries choose to recognize China because China is huge. It has a huge military and a huge economy. And if you want to trade with China, with few exceptions, you need to recognize it. But among the many nations of the Pacific, from Balao to Kiribati to the Marshall Islands, their geographic isolation and small populations mean that when it comes to China, trade isn't nearly as important as aid. For example, for a few million dollars a year in aid from the Taiwanese government, Solomon Islands was happy to recognize Taiwan for decades. I mean, why not? For Solomon Islands, it didn't really matter that much who they recognized, so you might as well take the money. But when China offered more money, which is what happened in 2019, Solomon Islands switched its recognition following secret negotiations. This practice is called checkbook diplomacy, and often leads to some ridiculous situations where tiny island nations pit Taiwan and China against each other in a bidding war to acquire something which, in the scheme of things, isn't really that meaningful. Since the events of this story, Taiwan has grown less interested in checkbook diplomacy, to an extent, and is prioritizing meaningful diplomatic relationships like the one it has with Somaliland, which go well beyond the simple exchange of aid for recognition. But China remains determined to eradicate all recognition of Taiwan and calls its policy the One China Policy, which is shorthand for saying, there's only one China and it's us. Vanuatu agreed to uphold the One China Policy in 1982, when it signed a diplomatic communique with the Chinese government first establishing formal diplomatic relations. Oh, and supposedly, China was giving Vanuatu $10 million a year in aid, but knowing exactly how much money was being exchanged isn't easy. We know a lot of money was changing hands throughout this story, but exactly how much or where it was actually going isn't always clear. Now, this aid is pretty important to Vanuatu because, like most Pacific Island countries, Vanuatu faces a lot of challenges. Its population is small, just over 300,000 people, and is spread out over 83 islands in a 1,300-kilometer-long archipelago. And it's also poor. The current GDP per capita for Vanuatu is $3,235 per year, which makes it the second poorest country in the Pacific after Kiribati. So a million dollars, and especially tens of millions of dollars, goes a long way in Vanuatu. And although I have zero proof that this happened, it wouldn't be that surprising if some of these aid payments went into the bank accounts of individual officials and not the government treasury. Thanks to WikiLeaks, we know that the Taiwanese government paid monthly bribes to legislatures in Nauru to keep them sweet, something I've covered in another video about the wild world of Pacific diplomacy. 
But as I said, there's no proof of anything corrupt taking place in this instance. We can only speculate. Here's what we do know. Prime Minister of Vahor and a small entourage flew to Taiwan on the 30th of October, 2004, in secret. And by secret, I mean Vahor had not informed his cabinet, known in Vanuatu as the Council of Ministers, or even told them he was considering a change of policy. He hadn't even told Deputy Prime Minister Ham Lini. On November 3rd, without his government's agreement, Vahor signed a communique agreeing that Vanuatu would switch its recognition from China to Taiwan. According to one source I found, Taiwan agreed to provide $20 million in aid a year for three years in exchange for this recognition, double what China was paying, although Taiwanese officials denied this. Whatever the exact terms of the deal, Vahor traveled back to Vanuatu, and on the plane with him was the new Taiwanese ambassador, James Tien, who checked in at the La Meridian Resort Hotel in the Vanuatu capital, Port Villa. I mean, if you get to be an ambassador, you might as well live large. As you can see here, the Le Meridian has six flagpoles at its main entrance, and like many hotels, it is common custom to fly the national flags of the hotel's guests. When Ambassador Tian asked the hotel manager to fly a Taiwanese flag, of course, the manager was happy to do so. And then all hell broke loose. You see, just a few days before Vahor had flown off to Taiwan on his secret mission, China had appointed a new ambassador to Vanuatu named Bao Shusheng. Ambassador Bao had spent his career working in the African section of China's foreign affairs ministry and had just finished a tour as the Chinese ambassador to Botswana. From what I've been able to find out, Vanuatu was Bao's last overseas posting and was possibly intended as a cushy little number to round out a successful career. He could spend a few years on the beach sipping drinks with umbrellas in them. Nothing particularly difficult is going to happen in Vanuatu, right? Well, actually, if there's one thing that's bound to create drama in Chinese diplomatic circles, it's someone flying the Taiwanese flag. That and someone at the Houston Rockets tweeting their support for the people of Hong Kong. When he got wind of the flag flying at the Lim Meridian, Bao protested to the Council of Ministers, and on November 18th, the manager of the Lim Meridian received a letter from Vanuatu's deputy prime minister, Ham Lini, instructing him to take the flag down. But almost immediately, he got a fax from the Vanuatu Foreign Ministry telling him to keep it up. According to Prime Minister Vahor, Vanuatu deciding to recognize Taiwan shouldn't be an issue because we don't see anything in the Bible that says there must be a one China policy, which is true, but doesn't really add to the argument. Anyway, Ambassador Bao was furious. He had only been in post a few weeks and he hadn't even formally submitted his diplomatic credentials yet. And here he was having to negotiate about flags with hotel managers. After making no progress for weeks, he finally decided to confront Prime Minister Vahor directly, and early on the morning of the 1st of December, he marched down to the Parliament building, a building which, by the way, had been built using Chinese aid money in 1982, where he waited to speak to Vahor. He was kept waiting for five hours and that probably didn't help his mood much. Finally, Bao tracked the prime minister down in a corridor as he was leaving a parliamentary session, and he was able to speak his mind. And here, our story diverges a bit. What I mean is, accounts of exactly what happened next vary, but essentially agree on the main details. We can be pretty confident that there was not what diplomats call a full and frank exchange of views, because according to what Bao told the Associated Press, they didn't speak at all. Before I said any word, Bao said, he bunched his fist and showed me his fist, then pushed my right shoulder. Calling it a push was Bao likely being diplomatic, and he even went so far as to refer to it as an unfriendly attitude when he spoke to the Sydney Morning Herald. But in the Chinese media, and especially the Chinese language media, Bao's description of the incident sounded much more violent, and was widely described as an assault. In an interview which Bao gave years later, he said Vahor suddenly stretched out his fist and shook it in front of his eyes, then slammed my right shoulder. However hard Vahor hit Bao, I'm sure it wasn't Fraser Ali or even Logan Paul versus KSI. It was probably two elderly public servants getting a bit shovey with each other. But it's important to understand that diplomacy almost never gets physical. Even if Vahor only pressed his finger into Bao's chest, that would be remarkable. 
to punch him was extraordinary. And if you're going to punch an ambassador in the shoulder or anywhere else, you probably shouldn't punch the ambassador from China. All accounts agree that once Vahor's punch had been thrown, he turned tail and ran. According to Bao, I was shocked at what happened, but his bodyguard stepped in and the prime minister then rushed to his car. And then he added, this has deeply offended me and my country. I wasn't able to find many sources providing Vahor's perspective on the incident. There was a Wall Street Journal article which had a quote from Vahor in it, although I have to say his account isn't very persuasive. According to the article, he said he didn't do anything wrong and this guy is not a diplomat. If he's a diplomat, he should respect the prime minister of Vanuatu, not to say nonsense. I don't want to be unfair to Serge Vahor, but from everything I've read, he's a bit of a hothead. For example, he had only become prime minister at the end of July 2004 and, and ever since then had been facing threats of a vote of no confidence in parliament. He tried to stop this by appealing to the Supreme Court, which ruled against him. His response was to call Vanuatu's chief justice, Vincent Lunebeck, a Piccinini Blong white man, which literally means child of a white man, but was intended to mean that the chief justice was a puppet of Western powers. Lunebeck was so outraged by this remark that he issued a warrant for Vahor's arrest, but the charge was dropped because the insult had been spoken in Parliament, where the Prime Minister enjoyed parliamentary immunity. Also, there's no evidence of this, but it's possible Vahor was so defensive because he stood to gain personally from switching recognition to Taiwan. We do know Taiwan had paid bribes to secure recognition from other countries, and we know that Vahor would later be convicted of accepting bribes himself in an unrelated case in 2015. But bribery or not, things got very messy in Vanuatu government circles for the next few days. First of all, China reportedly froze a $2 million aid installment, which probably concentrated a few mines. Australia also threatened to withhold aid unless Vanuatu cracked down on corruption. It isn't clear if this threat was related to the whole Taiwan-China thing, but the timing is suspicious. Then Vahor's government began to unravel, with 16 MPs defecting to the opposition. When the opposition again tried to force a vote of no confidence, a move which would topple Vahor as prime minister, Vahor appealed to the Supreme Court for an injunction to stop the vote. You know, the Supreme Court led by Chief Justice Vincent Lunebeck, the guy Vahor had just recently insulted. His appeal was rejected. Surprise. And the vote proceeded on the 11th of December. The vote went against Vahor and he was ousted as prime minister after just four and a half months in office. His former deputy, Ham Linney, was elected the new prime minister, and the Vanuatu government set about trying to repair the damage to its relationship with China, and crucially, to unblock the flow of aid money it badly needed. This was done in a groveling letter from the new prime minister, which said, I would like to apologize to you and the government of the People's Republic of China on behalf of the Vanuatu government and the people of Vanuatu for the events in the past two weeks that nearly destroyed the friendly relations our two countries have enjoyed for over 20 years. This did the trick. As soon as the letter was received, the $2 million on hold was released. Taiwanese ambassador James Tian checked out of the Le Meridian soon after this. Reportedly, Ambassador Bao instructed all airlines in Vanuatu to refuse to fly Tian out of the country, but Tian managed to sneak away anyway and the Taiwanese flag outside the Le Meridian Resort finally came down. Phew. In February 2005, Ambassador Bao was showered with gifts at an official reconciliation ceremony. These included heaps of bananas, taro root, and cabbage, as well as bottles of a local drink called kava and a live pig. <coughs> Bao remained ambassador to Vanuatu until June 2007, during which time he, well, I'm not exactly sure if he did anything else of significance. He did sign some commemorative envelopes. Meanwhile, the dramatic life of Serge Vahor continued to be uh, dramatic. His short stint as prime minister in 2004 was actually his third time in office, the first dating back to 1995, and he actually became prime minister on two more occasions, making five times in total. His fourth and fifth premierships were extremely short-lived, however. Neither lasted more than a month. As I mentioned before, Vahor was convicted of accepting a bribe in 2015. At the time, he was serving as foreign minister, if you can believe that, and he and several other MPs took money in exchange for voting against the government of the day in a vote of no confidence. 
They seem to have a lot of these in Vanuatu. And guess what? As he was leaving the Supreme Court building one day, Vahor walked up to a photographer from Vanuatu's Daily Post newspaper and punched him. This was despite the photographer standing five meters away from the door and clearly wearing a Daily Post t-shirt. Vahor and the other MPs on trial were convicted and sentenced to three years in prison. He served 18 months before he was pardoned in September 2021 by the current president of Vanuatu, Talis Obed Moses. Because he was pardoned, Vahor is once again eligible to run for office at the next parliamentary elections in 2024. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video.